Hey, Peter. I told you you have to sit up front. I see you skirting in the back. so many people's lives. And I want to picture something. I feel like I was there. I've heard the story so many times. <laughs> so it's the Jersey Shore. I don't know if you've visited New Jersey. Some of you have. I, at the, one of the conference back east, um, we, were, we went to where Peter grew up. He grew up on this little place called Mystic Island that they used to call Mistake Island. <laughs> because they built it out right on the marshland. And his dad was a real estate agent. He was actually the one who sold all the houses in that development. And so everyone knew the D'Amato's. And Peter was the little kid who liked snakes. We were in a cafe in New Jersey. This is like just a few years ago at the Northeast, the International Conference back Northeast. And this little old lady, she just grabs Peter in this cafe and she's like, hey, I know you. And I'm like, We've been, Peter, I've been back in a million years. And she goes, you're that snake boy. <laughs> She's like, you're that little boy who used to collect all those snakes and lived in Mystic Island, and you're the D'Amato. So New Jersey has these things called the Pine Barrens. And so if you go there, honestly, before we started wrecking everything and destroying all the cameras plants, it used to be pines, pretty much you drew a line from New Jersey to southeast Texas, or you know, eastern Texas. It's a lot of pine trees down there is how it all used to be. And so it's called the Pine Barrens because it's almost all pine trees and it grows on sandy shores. And there was a little uh, <coughs> piney boy named uh, Russell Driscoll. And uh, <laughs> a skeptical little boy named Peter D'Amato who was always, already really into snakes and nature in general and knew a lot about things like that. And this little piney boy, he whispered, Psst, I know where Venus like catchers grow. And he took Peter to uh, Tuckerton Lake. Skeptical Peter, he's like, I don't think Venus flycatchers grow here in New Jersey. Yeah. They took him there, he took him there, they went there together, and Peter told the story at the opening. He gave the art history really eloquently, actually. But he took him there and he held up a sunday leaf, and Peter still remembers that sunday leaf, it glistening in the sun. And when I redid the photos for the Savage Garden, he sent me, I went to Albion Bog, I think a couple of times, taking various photos of rotundifolia leaves with just the right prey on it in just the right way. That was the hardest photo in the book, honestly. And we went through all the photos. This one has a spider. No, that's that one, right? That's what I have, you know, flying. No, that's right. And 
We finally found the one that he liked, and that was the one. It was a really important photo to him, almost as important as the cover. And so, that one moment created so much of this. Not all of it, but if you had taken a stone and thrown it into Tuckerton Lake, ripples would have spread out. And there's been other stones in the lake, too, for sure. But this was definitely a stone in the lake. And that tiny little moment between two little boys in New Jersey uh, created so much and affected so many, lives, so many people's lives. And so 20 years later, <laughs> uh, my dad used to sell at the Sausalito flea market not too terribly far from here. And so on Sundays, when I'd go with him. And I would tool around the flea market. And I really like nature, too. If you'd ask Damon, then what do you want to do when he grows up, I'd say, a zookeeper or something like that. I always loved nature my whole life. I didn't know about carnivorous plants. And so I found Peter Damato there one day. And he was selling a few carnivorous plants. This is in 1989. Um, I bought a Cape Sunday from him. <laughs> it changed my life. And we joke still to this day. Sometimes I'll say, you know, best Cape Sunday you ever sold. And he'll say, best Cape Sunday you ever bought. <laughs> but as ridiculous as it is, that little barefoot kid in the dusty aisles of the flea market with skinned up knees, super dorky with long hair, <laughs> was like, my entire life changed that day. And by 14, I had totally decided that this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And for those of you who are younger or maybe just getting into this now, you may not realize, um, you know, when, when I was a little boy, you couldn't get any plants hardly. If you didn't know Peter, you couldn't get any Nepenthes at all. You could get cuttings or ventricosa, something we call burkai, roco, very few plants were even available, you know. And so one of the amazing things is for me is I got to grow up with it. And even more amazing for me, is California Carnivores opened in 1989, just near my house, a couple towns over that summer. And I was the most obsessed little boy. I would not go away. And I don't want to make this all about me, but I would not go away. <laughs> so like, when I was like a, about 14, I think, um, I got my first greenhouse, and I started filling pots at California Carnivores for plants. And I was like, oh my god, I get to fill pots at California Carnivores for plants. <laughs> This is, what a deal. Who's going to let any kid do anything for $10 an hour in plants? And that was the deal. And then I graduated high school, and I was like, oh, you know, oh my god, I get to work at California Current Wars. And back then, it was just uh, Peter and Mary and, uh, and me. And uh, Peter taught me everything he knew. That's how I learned how to make leaf cuttings and how to do everything that I do here. Uh, So, um, <laughs> so I don't know if you realize it, but this is, next year will be the 30th anniversary of California Carnivores. It's the 20th anniversary of the Savage Gardens originally coming out this year. And I think most of us, everyone here has a story. Many of us, when we were little kids, where that insanely insignificant moment either change our lives, not even change everyone's life the way it changed mine, but it did bring constant joy into the world. We all learned to love and appreciate these plants. Plants that nobody cared about. When I was little, nobody cared about these plants. You'd show people and nobody knew about them, nobody cared about them. We've been screaming about them for 30 years to get it to this point. <laughs> and I remember, I remember the first time I called him at home. I was like, oh my goodness, he's, he's in the phone book? <laughs> he was a fool back then. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I, I took me, I was real nervous. And it's funny because now people sometimes they come up to me and I go like, oh, what is wrong with this person? And they're really nervous. And I'm like, oh, I'm just a prank, whatever. But I called him up and I asked him a question and he said quietly, you know, he answered my question and he said, please don't call me at home anymore. <laughs> Uh, eventually, I went away. Shimley stole me away. I went to Louisiana and I did that. And now I've come back. Uh, I came back in 06. I was made an owner in 09. Unbelievably, next year will be my 10th year of being an owner. Um, being an owner of California carnivores 
uh, having my photos in the Savage Garden, all these things have been childhood dream come true for me like over and over and over again. I get to go to work, I work six days a week, but it's okay because I get to do exactly what the 11 year old me wants to do every single day. So I'll be eternally grateful uh, for that Sunday that you sold me. That was 30 years ago. Um, the Savage Garden. Then the Savage Garden came out, and I was like, oh my god, I don't have to call Peter at the nursery anymore and ask him all these questions. <laughs> and the magic of that book, I mean, there's so much and we all know, but it's just a really, you know, the magic of that book is he starts off, the very first thing is he says how he killed a Venus flytrap. That's the first thing he talks about. And it's written from the first person, so people really enjoy reading it because it talks about his experiences. And it's funny, and it's wonderfully written. And it spread like wildfire. It totally, again, changed the hobby once again all over, almost in the same manner that tissue culture did. And then he got, went on the Martha Stewart show. If you want a lark, search YouTube, Martha Stewart, Peter D'Amato. <laughs> and you can see him on the Martha Stewart show. And there's Martha right there trying to tease the fly traps and him not letting. <laughs> yeah, please don't touch the fly traps. And that book has spread all over the entire world. And people use it as the manual. Still to this day, other books have come out. Um, and they're wonderful books and they've contributed to their knowledge. But that book is what everybody uses. It's referenceable. It's still a book. When I forget something, I open it up and I go to those green pages in the back and it says everything on there. That was the genius of the way it was written. Um, so, I think it's a sign that what we, we've talked about beginnings, and I think that the hobby has really changed this year. In a weird way, this has been a, a kind of a weird maturing moment, I feel like, for the hobby in general. It's amazing how many people are in this room. I know it's not a ton of people, but like Larry said, it used to be three people sitting around. <laughs> and then I wonder how to grow these goddamn plants. <laughs> and nobody was doing it too terribly well. The botanical gardens had some scraggly little things, and they didn't look very nice in plastic pots. But Peter really taught us how to grow these plants and how to do it well. And not just that, but how to like, really appreciate them and display them. Not as quirky, weird things that caught bugs, but as beautiful, amazing things. And he taught us how to put them in beautiful planters. And how to put like, rocks in there to make it a little prettier, like nature but better. Maybe a few dinosaurs in there too. <laughs> And honestly, this might freak, you know, bump some of you out, but the truth is, it was, it, me and Peter don't ever go around looking and snickering at bugs being caught. And that's not what delights us about these plants. When we were kids, maybe that's what caught our interest, but we keep doing it because they're so beautiful. And really what we do is we walk around the nursery and we go, will you look at this goddamn thing and how beautiful it is? And we've seen things that discovered in our lifetime, and we've been able to grow things that we never thought we'd ever be able to grow. And the one thing you'll, He's unbelievably kind. He's one of the nicest people you'll ever know. <laughs> if he, he'll come in and he'll say, I just rescued a yellow jacket from a church. <laughs> I said, you rescued a yellow jacket? He's like, yeah, I was just struggling with it. I couldn't stand to look at its little face. <laughs> This is the deep, sweet thing. But one of the things that, and we bicker sometimes because he's like a father to me. And I, <laughs> sometimes I'm not the easiest person to work with because we want to get a lot done. But whenever I start to get a little bit tense, I always think about this. And it makes me smile. Whenever Peter ever sees a frog at California Carnivores, he always says the same thing. He goes, hello there. <laughs> and whenever he sees a lizard, he always says the same thing. He says there, hello there, Mr. Lizard. <laughs> and he really does love nature. And he loves these plants with all his heart. And that passion is spread like ripples in a pond throughout everywhere. Um, there's a lot I want to say. I'm probably going to forget things that I want to say. I haven't gone on and on and on. 
All right. <laughs> I can go on and on because my expertise is in California carnivores with Peter D'Amato. I spend a lot of time with them. Um, but of course, what this is all leading up to is we're getting a first today, something that's never been done in our hobby. We're getting a Lifetime Achievement Award to Peter D'Amato. just coming from the gang at California Carnivores. And it would be, that would be a meaningful thing. But at this time, I would like uh, any of you who have tapped on the shoulder and are here representing uh, <coughs> your society, why don't you guys come on up, if you're brave enough to, and if you're not, it's all right, but come on up if you, um, if we tapped you on the shoulder, please come on up. And there's a lot of you. Yeah, there are a lot. Yeah. So, um, Daniela is going to take this part over. Yes, you do? Absolutely. Get up here. Sorry, a little bit slapdash at the end trying to get this all thrown together because I had to coordinate it with the entire world. And we wanted to surprise Peter. And we wanted to surprise Peter. Oh, I'm surprised. <laughs> I would just like to point out that Damon contacted every carnivorous plant society in the world to ask about this award. And every single one of them, it wasn't a question for them. It wasn't a, but why should we give Peter this award? It was a list of people saying yes. And so we have a bunch of people here to talk about that. Hi, everybody. I'm the uh, president of the Bay Area Carnivorous Plant Society, who uh, helped host this today. And um, I haven't been the president for long, but I've been, I've been involved with the club for about 10 or 15 years. Um, and of course, like many of you in this room and, and many of you, your members in, in the societies around the world, um, my, uh, my hobby started off with a gift of a plant and the Savage Garden. And I read the Savage Garden. I, I became, like many of you, you know, pretty obsessed. I read it front to, front to back several times. I love the book. I could probably recite several sections of it now, and I still take it off the, off the shelf and, and uh, use it as a reference. But, but the thing I want to talk about is, is when I first started getting interested and I first came up to California Carnivores, and oh my gosh, there's Peter D'Amato. I was a little starstruck, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, I, I'm going I'm to go and try to talk to him. And I was just like, hi, you know, <laughs> awkwardly. Uh, like a big plant nerd that, that I am, and like all of you are, uh, <laughs> someone and others. But, but anyway, the, the thing was that he was, he was just so kind and approachable and really sweet. And over the, over the past few years, I've gotten to know him a, a little bit better, and I, 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 I am very happy to call him a friend. And whenever he sees me, it's always a warm welcome. And, hey, how are you doing? How are your kids? He's so nice to my kids when I bring them in. He's really sweet to them, too. And he, he's just an amazing guy. And, of course, we... we we are all involved in carnivorous plants in some way or another because of all of the work you've done. It's, it's amazing, and you do it so well, so kindly, so perfectly. It's, uh, we, we, owe you, we owe you everything. Thank you. Oh. I, I, also, I also should mention the Bay Area Carnivorous Plant Society is the oldest carnivorous plant society founded uh, in part by Peter D'Amato. And so he's, you know, he's the reason that a lot of clubs have, have modeled themselves after the Bay Area Carnivorous Plant Society. And it's a great club. And, it, you know, we have record membership. Uh, we have a lot of involvement, new faces, old friends, everybody continuing. And, and everybody feels the same way I do about, about Peter. I know it. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Haley Eastburn. I'm from San Diego Carnivorous Plant Society. I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator. And um, we owe our founding um, a lot to Peter, um, who spoke a few times with our founder and present, 
present day president, um, Allison, um, about the founding of our group. And he contributed a lot of inspiration and encouragement to her. Um, and if you know Allison, she's not the most social person. And so the encouragement and inspiration really pushed her to uh, reach out into this amazing, friendly, quirky community that we've built and uh, bring in more enthusiasts from San Diego. And um, now we're a huge, a huge society. We have our own plant shows and sales. We have our own education and outreach that goes out into the community and teaches young kids about these plants, about the important conservation that we're doing all over the world for these plants and the cool research. And so all of that came from, from another, another ripple, another stone in the pond. Um, and so thank you, Peter. Uh, hi, my name's Alan O'Neill. I'm an Australian and I've travelled over here to, um, to do my once in a lifetime journey. And, uh, you know, it began, the seed for that idea, it began before Peter's book came, you know, into my life. But um, reading through his work certainly cemented the idea that I'd have to come over here and, um, and visit California carnivals. It's just been. Um, uh, like a dream come true for me. I, um, uh, I didn't come here to represent our society, but I'm a member of the Australasian Carnivorous Plant Society, and I specifically work with a new branch that we opened only just in the last year, which is um, was supposed to be just known as the Canberra branch, and Canberra's the capital city of Australia, but not many people know it. You know, they know maybe Melbourne or Sydney, but. Um, I live about an hour north of Canberra and I managed to rustle up enough people from my neighbourhood that they had to call the Goulburn and Canberra. Um, <laughs> Australian Carnivorous Plant Society and Goulburn's this little dot on the map, but um, you know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm putting this out there with the plants and um, it's just amazing to see so many people from all around the world who've come here and without a doubt so many of you would have been influenced by getting your hands on that copy of the book. And I'm sure so many of you, when you speak to people who come into the hobby, say, look, whatever you do, go and get the Savage Garden. You know, you can, you can go through the internet, but you're going to find all sorts of information. You've got a book here that's been written by a guy who's an expert in his field, it's been peer reviewed, and it's been in print since the day it came out. You can't get better than that. So thank you, Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, my name is Amy Kurosawa. Um, I don't think we have been uh, properly introduced before, but I'm uh, here on behalf of the New England Carnivorous Plant Society as well as the uh, Japanese Carnivorous Plant Society because cannabis and I think maybe um, taking a break because of the jet lag. And then also um, uh, Japanese Carnivorous um, Exploration Society. Yes, uh, so those three society in the... Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I would like to thank you from all these you know, people who joined the society because your father of the uh, carnivorous plant growers and uh, including myself, um, your savage garden was a bible and uh, um, when I got my first Drosella capensis, not from you, but when I got it, you know, your savage garden was the uh, basically bible to support my plant life and then also when I got my first healing, oh my god it's a very expensive plant and uh, when I got my cephalotus, first cephalotus, this is was like the you know prized uh, my treasure plant and I did not want to kill it and then your savage garden was the only support that I had and then to this day um, as uh, the Union Converse Plant Society we order a a bulk of the Savage Garden and then continue to uh, um, sell at the show, our sh annual, annual shows uh, with a very good price and supporting the new, uh, new fresh growers. So uh, thank you very, very much. Hello, 
Peter. Uh, I'm Jeremiah from Colorado, and I, <laughs> and I remember when I took a road trip out to California with my family when I was about oh probably 12 or 13 years old, and uh, most people dream of meeting like movie stars or Michael Jordan or somebody like that, but. For me, my entire life, it was meeting Peter D'Amato. And for years, I just dreamt of that. And so uh, I arrived there, I think, half an hour before California Carnivores actually opened, just like waiting for it to open. And I saw him drive up, and I was like, oh, yes. But still waiting until they actually unlock the doors. And uh, Peter, the first time I met him, he was just so gracious. I mean, I was just this little kid who you know, just knew nothing about carnivorous plants, and he spent all day. I was there until he locked the doors that evening. <laughs> Uh, showing me around the greenhouse and just treating my whole family with just such love and uh, just willing to take the time to show me around and I just will never forget that. So just thank you so much. Hi, my name is Jeff Dallas, and I am got drafted to represent the Oregon carnivorous plant community. We're not actually a uh, organized society, but we meet uh, once a month at a, an Irish pub in Portland, which is so Portland uh, for the community to meet together that way. But it's a very tight group, um, and it keeps growing. As a matter of fact, at the uh, particular place that we meet. Uh, I remember uh, walking in one particular Saturday that the group was getting together all of our plants and such in there. And I heard one of the regular customers in there going, oh, it's the pod people again. <laughs> but one of the reasons I think I got drafted to do this is because of my history and interactions. Even though this, this is my first ICPS conference, and the first time I've actually sat down and talked with Peter um, with any length, um, when he mentioned during the intro that he, that he did yesterday about that little booklet when California Carnivores was first opened, I ordered that. And I was going to school up in Seattle at that time, and I probably read that thing cover to cover a number of times. I was still very much just kind of a hobbyist at that time. And then fast forward about four years um, after I graduated, um, I started selling plants for the very first time at Portland Saturday Market. And um, I just, when the Savage Garden was actually published then at that point, just digested that book. Probably placed three or four orders of 10 speed press for the book that I sold and gave away many copies of it um, down at Portland Saturday Market. And I sold plants there for 22 years. That started a chain reaction um, within the community in Oregon. So many of our folks um, that are there probably saw me at one point, but so much of what I know, um, you know, it's like there was the Adrian Slack books, but then it was the Savage Garden, um, just memorizing that thing cover to cover. Oh. <laughs> That's delightful to hear. Um, no, truly. I, I mean, but uh, but that's that's kind of I think in a lot of ways what got us started. And I'm also co-owner of Saracenia Northwest Nursery, and so so much of what we have done and and has happened with our nursery, you know, goes back to some of that original material from Peter um, and that. And so even when we did our for those of you that have seen our instructional DVDs and all the stuff that we put online and all of that. So many times going back um, to information uh, that Peter put out, um, you know, it's like to this day, you know, I would say of all the different literature and things that are out there, when I'm looking to see, well, what did somebody say about this particular plant? I'll go back to, you know, the Savage Garden and Adrian Slack, and I, I look at those things um, repeatedly, not to discount anything anybody else has done. It was amazing information in here, but I probably talked long enough, but thank you so much. We talked to so many societies, and not all of them could be here, so I'm just going to intersperse with some of the statements that they have sent. So the Mid-Atlantic Carnivorous Plant Society says, we are delighted to endorse a gift for Peter D'Amato. He and California Carnivores have generally, generously supported MACPS, even though we are on the opposite coast, and Peter himself has made enormous contributions to carnivorous plant horticulture. He is certainly one of the most influential people in the CP world today, and plants from his nursery have been enjoyed by many of our members. My name is Ron Neese. I'm the current acting president for the Sacramento Club, um, which is 
his fault because he's the one who told me about the club. <laughs> uh, my brief story is very similar to Pablo's. We were coming, my wife and I were coming down. My, you know, we were coming through Sebastopol. I pulled off. Terry's going, yeah. <laughs> First time California carnivores. It's raining outside. Walked in. Peter was in there, starstruck. Walked up to him. He talked to me for an hour and a half. It would have been all day. <laughs> Except my wife's pulling my arm at, at that point, and we're out. And my hobby went from killing fly traps to the limited success that I'm having now. Also, tell me about the Sacramento Club, and Sacramento's now expanding um, their carnivorous because it's, it's a multiple discipline club. But um, thank you. And uh, when we put the, when we got notified about this award, I put out an email to the board members. It was unanimous in about 30 minutes. Everybody had responded, including the president, who's over in England at the moment. So, you know. I uh, tend to talk far too much. So I'll make this really short. Um, my name is Justin. I'm from the Carnivorous Class Society of Canada. You can count um, the number of us in this room on one hand, as well as uh, in the entire country, there's not very many of us. Um, I can't think of anybody that ha doesn't have your book in Canada, and every single new member that joins for us, it constantly, it, we, we send them to you, we, they buy your book, and they are non-stop raving about it. I don't think that anyone in Canada wouldn't be growing plants without your help. Um, I don't want to go into too much, but you can be an, an honorary Canadian. And so, <laughs> if, uh, if anything ever happens down here, you can come up and live with us. I'm kidding, probably with us, let's come to it. Thank you very much.